guys, have you ever wanted to add a little pizzazz to your next D&D or LARPing adventure? Well, today I'm going to show you how you can level up your next adventure by making ancient map scroll props for your next campaign. First things first is you're going to find a large piece of paper. I used a large piece of paper that I had purchased previously for bookbinding and I hadn't used it yet, so I thought it would be really good to use for this purpose. I thought of maybe using Bristol board, but I found maybe that the paper for a Bristol board would be too thick and it wouldn't roll up nice enough. So you're going to take your large piece of paper and you're going to cut or tear it in half or leave it large if you prefer if that's the size that you're looking for. You can make this map pretty much any size that you want. It's up to you. I would recommend creating a sketch ahead of time just so you know what your map is going to look like. I pulled out an old D&D book and kind of looked at some of the maps in there. Decided to base mine off of a map that I had created for a previous book I was writing that never saw the light of day. But hey, I kept it around and it's going to work perfectly for this project. World creation is one of my hobbies. Once you're satisfied with your sketch, you can transfer that image to a larger piece of paper that you're going to be using for your map. If you're a better artist than me, you could probably just start with the larger piece of paper, but I needed to sketch mine out first so I knew exactly what I was putting on the larger piece of paper so I didn't ruin it by erasing things 50 million times. To make my maps more visible, I went over the lines again with some fine tip pens. You could probably get away with just going over the lines again with a heavier pencil line. You just want to make sure that your lines are going to be visible after the next step. Next, we're going to get a little bit messy by artificially aging our paper. So now you need to make some coffee or tea. If you're like us and you drink coffee in the morning, you could just use what's left over in the pot. That's all I did. Apparently we didn't need much caffeine this day because there was a lot left over for me to use. Score. All you want to do is make sure if you're making your coffee or using what you have already made for that day, it has cooled down enough for you to use so you don't burn yourself. This does get a little bit messy, so you're gonna wanna find a pan that's large enough for your paper to sit in so you don't get coffee all over your table or counter that you're working on. I used a large cookie sheet that I already had on hand. It was pretty much almost the size of my paper. It was just a little bit smaller, but it still worked. You're gonna wanna spread your coffee over the paper with a brush or sponge. The brush did work. You kind of might get some brush lines if that's the look you're going for have at it. I ended up using a sponge for mine. I found the application was a bit easier and I had more of an even spread of the coffee over the paper. And I did apply the coffee to both sides of the paper. Use some paper towel or a towel to mop up any excess coffee that you have. You want to try to get the paper not dry but just not soaking wet and sitting in fluid when you put it in the oven. So you're going to preheat your oven to 200 degrees and you're going to pop your paper and pan into the oven. Be careful because any sort of markings that you have on your pan will show up on the paper. I discovered this when I was aging paper in a previous video and I'll link that in the cards if you want to check it out. I fixed this problem by putting some parchment paper or wax paper underneath the sheet. Note though that if you do use a parchment or a wax paper under the paper when it goes into the oven it takes a little bit longer to dry. My paper took about four minutes to dry in the oven. You will want to check the paper periodically depending on the size size of your paper and how wet it was going in and how hot your oven is. Your drying time may be less or more than what mine was. Mine I found at 200 degrees for the size of paper I was using, four minutes was absolutely perfect. Any less than that and it was still a little bit damp when it came out. Now you're going to remove the paper once it's dry and you're going to repeat the steps for as many maps as you want. I only had one pan this size and I was making a couple of these maps. I did have to make sure that my pan had cooled down enough for me to use again for my second piece of paper. I also wanted a darker shade of discoloration on my sheet so I did apply a second coat of coffee to my paper. It did make it a little bit darker. I kind of also had a few spots in the pages that were still a little bit um, too light, so I made sure to go over those places that had been, I guess, resistant to the stain previously. And I didn't go over the whole sheet with the coffee again, I sort of did it in like sweeps, so that one side of the page was a little bit darker than the other side, to give it that more natural, yet artificial, aged look. That's just what I did for mine. You could add more or less depending on what kind of look you're going for. You do you, it's your craft. So then I had the bright idea that I needed to singe the edges of my maps and I decided the best place to do this was on top of my oven. I do not recommend doing this step inside the house. 
find a well-ventilated, non-flammable area to work for this next step, trust me, don't do this in your house. I turned on the oven fan to vent the smoke and everything, but I ended up having to open up the windows because my house ended up reeking like burnt coffee and charcoal. To cinch the edges, you just wanna go over the edges of the paper a little bit with the lighter until it kind of catches fire, and then you're gonna to wanna to immediately put it out. Unless you want a big burn spot in your map, be careful with this. I had one area that caught on fire really well, and I had a little bit of trouble putting it out. It does make it look really cool, but again, it wasn't the look I was going for at the time. And again, I was in my house <laughs> burning things. So probably not the brightest idea, but hey, no accidents today. Now that your maps are pretty much done, you're gonna wanna find yourself some doweling for the next step. The doweling I used was three quarter inches in diameter. Take your doweling and mark how big you want it to be. I cut mine so it was about an inch larger than my map on either side. So my map, when I measured it on my cutting map, was around 15 inches wide, so I cut my doweling to 17 inches. You're gonna want two pieces for each map. Once you have your dowels cut, you're gonna wanna sand the ends down so they are less rough and a little more smooth to touch. Now you can leave your dowels au natural, or you can paint them like I did. If you're a painter like me, you're gonna use some acrylic paint in whatever shade suits your fancy. I would imagine that you could probably just spray these suckers with spray paint as well. I painted a base coat in a shade of brown and then I dry brushed over top to create that faux natural wood look. With the scroll rods complete, now you can glue them to the edges of your maps. I use some Beacon Advanced Craft Glue for this. It is sort of a faster drying glue. It's clear and it's non-acidic. But I definitely felt that hot glue would 100% work or a wood glue or another kind of PVA glue. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that your glue is set. You may need to help the glue along by pressing the doweling down firmly onto the paper for a period of time until it holds and smoothing down the edge of the paper along the doweling as well, just so that it's adhered nicely to the side. Now all you're left to do is struggle to roll up your scrolls, wishing that you had a third hand for this. You're gonna to wanna to find something that you can tie your scrolls together with so they don't unravel as fast as your patients. I used some jute and tied it in a knot around the scrolls. And now you have some fancy, semi-realistic map scrolls for your next D&D LARPing or role-playing adventure. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you, especially if you got this far in the video. I really enjoy making these projects and sharing them with you. If you want to say hi in the comments, I would love to hear from you. If you want to learn how to make a few different versions of scroll props for your next adventure, watch this video next. My name is Pam. This is Total Pamarchy, the craft channel with a little anarchy. If you want to have more D&D fun with me, hit that subscribe button. Until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.